So I think what we do is we get started later sometime. At 4 o'clock we have a job state. Right? Yes, we're so trying to do this before 2 o'clock. Let's, let's uh, see if we can wrap it up. Uh, I don't know how long. Not too many minutes. Uh, actually, I can go right. I'll be done by uh, before 4. Okay, let's uh, plan. Okay. And I'm sorry, I'll leave the leave soon to so not be questions. That's okay. Yeah, not be. Thank you for Great coming. Basically, the idea was to provide some more contribution tips uh, for Saratoga in particular, but also across Silicon Valley. And, and uh, when we talked uh, initially with uh, the Santa Clara Valley Water District staff, it was sort of geared to single family homes and uh, specific use cases that we had with water contribution. And uh, Saratoga is primarily a large single family home, and that was the, uh, the idea we had. The first one that we are having, uh, and hopefully we'll have many more of these. And uh, the timing seems to be appropriate. It's raining outside, and we're sitting here talking about water conservation. Mm -hmm. like, but uh, uh, thank you again, Aaron yes, and Ken, for joining us today. And also Nina Walker, our city staff, she's here as well. And uh, we'll have a good learn. We have a good learning opportunity. We have to do some video, Great. and we'll also publicize it heavily to make sure to all the other. So you know, whatever you say today will be relevant and useful for many, many months to come. So that I'm going to turn it over Thank you. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. And, and thank you, Councilman. I'm so glad that you're here. And um, so first I wanted to uh, just tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Karen Coppett. I'm a Senior Water Conservation Specialist at Santa Clara Valley Water District. I've been there for 15 years. And um, my specialty is water conservation and water protection for um, residents and businesses. So, next slide. The Santa Clara Valley Water District is located in Elmden Valley, and it is an integrated water resources agency. We do a lot of different things. We wear a lot of different hats. In fact, just this morning, I participated in a Santa Clara Valley Water District event. I was uh, at the creek meeting, and uh, so friends of mine, Guadalupe River and we cleaned up uh, a section of Guadalupe River and that was sponsored by the Santa Clara Valley Water District. So we do a lot of different things including healthy creek sleep ecosystems. We do creek cleanups and creek maintenance. We also take care of um, flooding. Um, historically lots of creeks in, in Santa Clara County have flooded in the past so we try to prevent um, flooding. And what I'm here today is to talk about clean, reliable water. And um, that is where water conservation comes into play. So, next slide. We serve about 2 million residents here in Santa Clara Valley, uh, 15 cities, 4,700 well owners, which is an incredible number, 13 water retailers with five different watersheds. Here we are in Santa Clara County. Next slide. Where do we get our water? I hear this question all the time, and the answer is a little bit complicated. During an average year, we get about 55% of our water from the Sierra Nevada oh, Mountains. One, mountain. two, three. Okay, Karen, my apologies on interrupting, but is it okay if we can use a microphone? Oh, because yes, yes. it'll be a lot easier for us to hear with the video oh, recording. Of course, yeah. yes. Thank you so much. No worries. So about 55% of our water during an average year comes from the Sierra Nevada mountain range. And that's all the way from Shasta Lake to Lake Oroville um, and Hetch Hetchy. Um, it comes through uh, for uh, Santa, uh, Santa Clara Valley Water District, comes through the Sacramento San Joaquin River Delta. And, uh, and we get it, we put it through our three water treatment plants. Um, 30% of our water comes from local sources. We have about 10 above ground reservoirs, including um, Guadalupe Reservoir, Almaden Reservoir, Vegas, Chesbro. I can't name them all, but there's quite a few. Uh, so um, we have that. We also have recycled water. In fact, this last couple of years, our recycled water has um, increased. And in fact, in this area, um, you probably have noticed that Apple Computer is constructing just, uh, I believe, just east of you, is constructing a new facility, and um, that's their new campus. 
and they are uh, in a uh, public-private partnership to bring recycled water out to that new facility. And that's a really exciting thing because that's going to mean that people can tie into recycled water along that new um, recycled water line. So it's a very exciting thing. Also, we have water conservation. Um, and last year, I'm so proud of Santa Clara <coughs> County. Um, Santa Clara County saved 27% last year. So in an average year, we only save about 10%. But last year, we really responded to the drought, and we saved 27%. So it was a wonderful year for, for uh, water conservation in Santa Clara County. Next slide, okay. Um, in Santa Clara County, about 55% of the water that, um, that we get is used for residential purposes, so a little over half for residents. About a third of the water goes to businesses, and about 8% of the water is agriculture, and that's down in South County, so Morgan Hill and Gilroy. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then this is sort of municipal landscape. Uh, next slide. This is a, hard, a little bit of a hard slide to read. What this is is a um, satellite image of the Sierra Nevada mountain range, um, February 2014 versus about the same time in 2015. And uh, snowpack, this was already a drought year, and the snowpack had really gone down. Um, I need to update the slide to make it 2016. Uh, we had a little bit better luck this year um, in terms of getting snowpack but um, we are still in a situation where we have to be very careful about water conservation. Next slide. And you can see this is a, a pretty spectacular uh, slide. I think this is Allenton Reservoir, and that's an old Pinto <laughs> that uh, was unearthed uh, because of the drought. Next slide. And this is a slide that I just pulled off of um, the U.S. Drought Monitor in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, the U.S. Drought Monitor is an amazing uh, site. You can go there and you can find up-to-date information about drought in the United States. I pulled a slide that shows all of the West. Anything that's uh, other than uh, white is bad. So you can see that the, still California is really in an exceptional drought and that it goes all through Nevada, a little bit of Oregon, and certainly in the Southwest. Next slide. And this is specifically California. So anything dark is bad. So um, the, the dark brown is exceptional drought, the red is extreme drought, and the orange is severe drought on down. And as you can see, we're still, um, we have not come out of our drought. So although we were blessed with um, a nice rainfall this year. We still have ways to go. Next slide. And these are our current reservoir conditions. I know this slide is a little bit hard to read, but what you need to know here is that anytime you, uh, with these bars, these bars are the maximum capacity. So anything yellow shows you the maximum capacity, and the blue is how far up um, the reservoir is. And this is as of May 18th. So it's um, a very recent slide. And as you can see, on uh, these slides here, in Lake Oroville and Lake Shasta, they're approaching maximum capacity, and that's wonderful. The red lines here are um, historic averages. Um, but you can see that we're still a little bit below average um, uh, in several of our reservoirs. So um, again, just letting you know, we still have ways to go, and we are still in drought conditions. Next slide. Um, so, uh, what this means is that we've got reduced imported water allocations from the state. We've got a local reservoir capacity of about 62% of average, and part of that is the drought. And another part of that is, is that our reservoirs were actually constructed during a time when seismic standards were at a different level than that, that, that a different level than that they are now, and uh, and so we can't fill them completely to capacity because they're not up to current seismic code. So we're working to retrofit our reservoirs to make sure that our dams are at the current um, si uh, current code for um, for uh, if there's a devastating earthquake. We don't want the dams to collapse. 
Our groundwater is down about 80,000 acre feet. Um, as of last year, it's actually a little bit higher now. Um, so subsidence, that means when the land uh, compacts, is really a threat. Next slide. This slide's a little hard to read, but I'll, I'll try to go through quickly and explain it. This green line is our population starting in about 1910, right? So here's our population, and um, our population boomed after World War II really took off. And you can see our water, especially um, around then, just was going down, down, down. And um, we, as our population grew, our, our water demand increased. And because our groundwater level sank to proportions that were just um, very frightening, our ground actually compacted. And um, it's still land subsided 13 feet in San Jose between 1915 and 1970. And that's why when you go to Alviso, you can see the levees that um, keep the seawater out. Uh, Alviso is below sea level. Next slide. So the Santa Clara Valley Water District was founded um, as a response to that, as a response to the ground compacting. And uh, people knew that they, uh, you can see San Jose sinks four feet during the last 14 years. That's an incredible thing. Roadways collapse, foundations of houses. Um, there's infrastructure under, um, under the roadways. And so it's really a problem. So that's why the Santa Clara Valley Water District was, um, was created. Next slide. Mm -hmm. And climate change has actually impacted our uh, water supply. Climate change has really um, been very uh, hard. Uh, it lent a whole other dimension to um, to what we're dealing with here. It it impacts everything, as you can see. Next slide. Um, we just I just off of the, uh, the NOAA uh, National um, Center, um, uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration for their National Center for Environmental Information. Just pulled this off of their website. And they uh, announced that April marks the 12th consecutive month of record warmth for the globe. April 2016 was the hottest April ever recorded by NOAA since it started tracking global temperatures in the 1880s. So, this is the 12th consecutive month the agency has identified a month global temperature record, which is incredible. So all of these things, an increase in population, record high temperatures, um, impacts um, the um, water supply here in Santa Clara County. And it's something that we um, have to take into account and we have to plan for. Next slide. So uh, we have to make sure that we have reliable water supply for now and for well into the future because of ongoing droughts, climate change, re reductions in imported water, and our population growth. Next slide. And the State Water Board um, has uh, responded. The State Water Board still has current restrictions in place. There are a lot of things that are still restricted for residents and for businesses in California. You can't use um, water to wash sidewalks and driveways. No potable water for that. When irrigating with potable water, you can't let it run off onto sidewalks into the street. You have to use hoses with a shut-off valve to wash cars. Using potable water in decorative features that do not recirculate water is prohibited. And you can't uh, irrigate during and 48 hours following measurable precipitation. So today, it rained. And you'll notice if you walk around your neighborhood in the next 48 hours, any of your neighbors are watering. You can tell them you're actually not allowed to do that. You're still not allowed to do that in the state of California. Yes? I think too. Some of us are wrong as a curve. You know, the, we are in Kurdistan. And it's inevitable when you have the water in 180 degrees, some of it will spill on the on the uh, pavement I mean, on the street, but that makes it difficult for us. To manage. You can you can retrofit your irrigation equipment, and we'll have rebates for you starting July first to retrofit your your irrigation equipment to prevent that. 
you guys have somebody to come and advise us? Yes, we do. So if um, you are a San Jose Water Company customer, I assume, um, San Jose Water Company has a free program for any San Jose Water Company customers. We do too, it's our sister program. So anybody in Santa Clara County can get a free home water survey. A technician will come by appointment and will look at your water use indoors and out. Please. They will come and they will check out your shower heads and your faucet aerators. They will change them out and they yeah, will... We did it. The, sorry. Within the care program, we did that with uh, pg &E, but I, I'm interested in the garden. Oh, they'll go and they'll look at your outdoor water use as well, and they will um, look at your irrigation, they'll give you a, a schedule, they'll schedule your, they'll even um, program your irrigation time for you. do that? Um, so the way to do that is to call the San Jose Water Company, if you're a San Jose Water Company customer, everybody else, if you're a Cal Water customer or any other water company customer, call the Santa Clara Valley Water District, we will um, get you signed up for that. Okay. Next slide. Karen, you know, I have a question on that because uh, May 18th was the State Water Board they actually met. Mm -hmm. And do you have any perspective from that meeting in terms yes. of Yes. So uh, the state did um, uh, meet and send uh, and revise their emergency regulation. Um, they're still prohibiting these items here. Um, they um, have, it, it's a little complicated. They now are, are making every jurisdiction self-certify. Um, so uh, what you, uh, what Santa Clara Valley Water District is going to do, the board of directors are going to meet in the middle of June, and they are going to um, look at the situation for all of Santa Clara County, and they are going to vote um, what should the water savings standard be for our county. So you should see in the next um, three weeks or so, um, something from our board declaring, um, here's what our water savings goals are going to be for the next 12 months, or you know, 6 to 12 months. We'll see. Not wood, we have a wonderful rainfall in the winter time, um, in 20, the end of 2016, the beginning of 2017. However, if we don't, um, then we have a plan in place. So we always say, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. So, uh, next slide. So Karen, it seems like from the from the May 18th meeting, uh, there is a little bit of a local control being provided. Is yes, that correct? exactly, exactly. The state is letting local jurisdictions decide for themselves how best to respond to the drought. They still have to do many different things um, to show that they are prepared, just in case the next three years are a record drought continues. So they have to show that they are prepared to provide water. Um, just in case the drought is continued. So we will be doing that as well. Every um, few years, we have to revise our urban water management plan, and we have been doing that. We meet very um, uh, regularly, and we have a very close relationship with all of our local water um, providers, and, um, and we all work together very closely. Sure. So that we have a, a comprehensive plan and that, that, that we know that is right for everybody. So the Santa Clara Water, uh, Valley Water District meeting on June 14. Yes. You know, will sort of, uh, right now there is no mandate. Right. Right, there is no drought mandate for right. our Santa Clara Valley Water District. Well, there is. We are currently uh, under a 30% water savings right now. That has not been revoked. The Santa Clara Valley Water District asked everybody um, to save 30% of their water that use over what they used in 2013. That is still in place. That has oh, not okay. that has not sunset. Um, it's set to sunset June 30th, but the board will act June 15th to look at that and to decide if that should change or stay the same. I saw that June 14th was the meeting actually. June I'm sorry, 14th. June 14th. Yeah. June 14th. Yes. 14th, they will decide whether it stays or not. But right now it's scheduled to go through, the 30% is scheduled to go through June 30th. Got it. So yeah. now what kind of parameters would be would be looked at to basically define, you know, whether it's 30%, 20%, 10%, 0%, right? What are the good factors? Year, I think. Yeah. They um, have, our urban water management plan is uh, what uh, is, is the uh, methodology for determining what uh, we recommend to the board. 
So our urban water management plan looks at everything. It looks at hydrology, it looks at our groundwater level, it looks at our reservoir level, it looks at our recycling, it looks at our water conservation, it looks at the whole picture. It takes all of those factors into account and then it assumes dry years to come. And from that, it will um, show us what the recommendation should be. And then the board will, um, depending on uh, many different things, the board will take that into consideration. It's just one of the things that the board will take into consideration. Um, so we still have 30% reduction, and we still have only watering two days a week. Next slide. We also have, and I'm very proud about this, just to switch gears a little bit, we have an advanced water purification center, and this is an amazing place. It's located in North San Jose, and it is a really wonderful thing. It's basically a, a plant that takes our recycled water. That's my name, 237, exactly. Yes, that's right. You can do a tour of it. And you can, uh, it, it's wonderful because it takes the, the water and it um, purifies it to a level that um, is ultra pure. And right now we're blending it back into our recycled water. And we hope to, at some point, even take that water and um, let it um, percolate back into the groundwater. And um, that would be a wonderful source of water supply for us. And we hope that that will happen in the future. Next slide. We have water waste inspectors. We have um, a team of water waste inspectors. We have this fantastic app for your cell phone that everyone should download. And it's called Access Valley Water. And you can take this app and um, it's just one, and you can use it to, um, if you see water waste, you can report water waste while using this app. You can also call our drought hotline to report water waste. We um, have an email address, drought at valleywater.org. Um, and um, we have these water waste inspectors that will go by and help educate people to prevent water waste in Santa Clara County. Next slide. There are a lot of benefits of water conservation. And one of the main benefits that I like, that I always tell people about, is that it actually saves energy. Next slide. Because Water, about 15 to 20 percent of all energy consumed in California is for the water supply chain, which is incredible to me. And that means that um, we, a, a lot of energy goes into pumping, treating, trans, uh, uh, pumping, treating, heating water. It's uh, enormous energy use. So um, one of our board members likes to say that every time you turn off a tap, it's like turning off a light switch. So it's a wonderful water savings. Next slide. We have a lot of different water conservation programs to help people save water. We have a residential program, <clears throat> landscape programs, commercial industrial institutional programs, agriculture programs, and lots of education and outreach like what I'm doing today. Next slide. Um, we have programs for residents. As I mentioned before, we have a free home water survey. We call it our WaterWise House Call Program. San Jose Water Company has the same program, so you can call San Jose Water Company, and they will love <coughs> And I know this personally because I talked to the guy who runs this program, and he said, yes, please promote this program. You can call them before the July, anytime. Anytime. Okay. You can call them today and say, I would like a home water survey, and they will say, we are be happy to come out to your house. We have a great water rebate program, $200. I'm sorry, $200 um, for rebate. I'll talk to you about that. We have a high efficiency clothes washing uh, machine rebate of $150. Um, in July, our, our landscape rebate program will come back and we will have that come back in July. We will also give you free shower heads and aerators. If you call our office, we'll be happy to send those out to you. Next slide. You guys have those. Uh Moisture testers too? We have moisture meters, yes. Yes. Yeah, they're great. A couple of them. Yes. So we have a free WaterWise house call program that um, the technician will check for leaks, replace flapper valves, and install free shower heads and faucet aerators. The, the technician will also go outdoors, help you read your meter, and show you how to read your meter. It's an amazing tool. 
check your irrigation system, calculate personalized irrigation schedules, and provide water conservation information and water wise landscaping tips. It's a great service. And again, it's free. Next slide. Um, our gray water rebate is fascinating. We have a 200 flat rebate per single family home, and it's for what's called a laundry and landscape system. And that means that you take your water from your clothes washer and you divert it into your garden. And so the steps to participate in this program <coughs> are to get a pre-inspection survey, which is free, um, an application, and you'll receive your notice to proceed. You install your system, and then we do a quick inspection, and we give you a review. Is that possible to set install, or do you need to play? Yes, you can self-install, absolutely. Oh, sure. Next slide. Okay. People do it all the time. Gray water, let me tell you a little bit about gray water. It's used from your bathroom sinks, showers, tubs, and washing machines. So I use gray water all the time, and so does my husband. What we do is we put a bucket in our shower. We collect the warm-up water from our showers, and we use that water to flush our toilets. So yeah. it's super easy. Yeah, super easy to do. Um, our neighbors take that water from their shower, and they use it to water their plants. Um, it's really uh, a, a um, fantastic resource. So that's called gray water. Anything from toilets, diaper washing, kitchen sinks in California is considered something called black water. So you can't use black water, but you can certainly use gray water. Next slide. <clears throat> so a lot of the landscape system is pretty neat. It's a low cost system. And here's a great little diagram. Uh, here's your clothes washer. Here's your little diverter. And it goes down the irrigation system to a mulch basin. And um, if you have fruit trees, it's particularly um, helpful for fruit trees. Um, if you have um, uh, lemon, orange trees in this area, has a lot of them. It's a great way to water them. And no permit is required, which is nice. They just changed the rules about three years ago in California. Next slide. So what about soap and detergent requirements? Can you you have anything? to be careful about the soap that yeah. you use. You have to use the biodegradable um, laundry detergent. There's special ones on the market, but absolutely. Now, if you're washing anything that's particularly bad, you can flip your diverter and it goes down into the sanitary sewer like always. But, um, and the diverter is right there, right by your, your um, washing machine. So it has a, a little handle. It's easy to divert it to your garden or not. So let's say it, it rains and your garden doesn't need that. <coughs> then you just flip the diverter and divert it as you normally would into the sanitary sewer. It's really cool. Um, and uh, next slide, this is a pretty wordy slide. Um, this just shows you that you can, the, now you don't need a permit. Next slide. Uh, wow, that's a really long one too. <laughs> Do one more slide. So if anybody's interested, just go to our website, valleywater.org, and all the information is there. For businesses, we also have a lot of programs for businesses. For restaurants and, um, and apartment complexes, any kind of business, we have free high efficiency toilets and urinals. In fact, the installation is free and the fixtures are free. So it's a great program. We also have a sub-meter rebate, which will return July 1st. Um, it's a, um, for apartment complexes, for condominium complexes, um, you can, <clears throat> instead of one main water meter, you can put individual water meters at everybody's home and make people responsible for the amount of water that they use. Um, it's a wonderful program. We also have uh, rebates coming um, for uh, restaurants, for food steamers and ice machines. And we give out for restaurants free pre rinse spray valves, which are these valves here that you find in restaurants. Next slide. Uh, this is um, our urinal and toilet installation program. Next slide. So we have. Do for residential people? No, but the state of California does have a $100 rebate right now. Um, so if you wanted to change out your toilet and put in a high efficiency toilet, yeah. the state of California has a rebate. It's called their, it's called the Save Our Water program. And you just need to Google Save Our Water Toilet Rebate. You'll go right to it. And it's $100. And it's a nice little rebate for changing out your toilets. It's a great program. 
We have a, a wonderful program that we're bringing back called our Water Saving Heroes. So um, it's recognition um, of water savers, residents, businesses. Um, we encourage people to apply. And you'll get lots of great rec uh, uh, recognition through um, social media and our board as well. Next slide. We have lots of education and outreach, a lot of great resources on our website. We have a list of events on our website. We have a lot of um, specialized uh, um, gray water workshops coming up, especially. So um, if you're interested in gray water, take a workshop with us. They're free and they're really informative. What is it's, the next one coming up? Um, we are having one in about two weeks. Um, go to valleywater.org and you'll see a whole list there. It's like meeting with a, 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 your own personal consultant, your own personal contractor, because they will hold your hand through the whole process. It's really great. We have um, literature, too, on our website. You can either go to valleywater.org or you can go to watersavings.org. Both of these are our websites. Next slide. We have, um, you'll see our ads starting to come out. We're going to do a whole new campaign this summer about fighting the drought inside and out. Next slide. And now I'll entertain any questions you might have. That was a good blazing pace, Karen. Very yeah. nicely done. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I try to be cognizant of people's time. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, everybody. And thank you. feel free to go to valleywater.org. All right. Beautiful. That's exactly thank right. you, Karen, Ken, for Nina. Thank you, Nina, thank thank you for spending time today. <laughs> Sorry that more people didn't come. That's okay. Oh, you know what? If it's, on, if it's on next door on the councilman's website, I will. I'm going to email it to my neighbors. I, I love that. Thank we'll, you. We'll put it on YouTube. We'll send the link out to a few thousand people. So you'll be oh. yes, you'll be famous yes, oh. yes, yes. before you know it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank Bye. you very much. Rishi, look first. Look first. Thank you, my friend. Monday. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna. Uh, the roller's on, ready to go. Oh, you are ready, aren't you? I think it was. Yeah.